Uh, Where are you going, Baggins? Oh, uh, what, what, what about a, a little light? We like the dark. Dark for dark business. And there are many hours before dawn. Oh, yes, uh, um, of course. Uh, of course, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Let Toreen speak. Gandalf, dwarves, um, Mr. Baggins, we are met together in the house of our friend and fellow conspirator, this most excellent and audacious hobbit. Audacious? May the hair on his toes never fall out. All praise to his wine and his ale. We are met to discuss our plans, our ways, means, policy, and uh, devices. To the estimable Mr. Baggins, and perhaps to one or two of our younger dwarves, the exact situation at the moment may require a little brief explanation. Yes, yes. Uh, we thank shall you. soon, before thank the you. break of day, start on our long journey. Yes. A journey from which some of us, perhaps all of us, mm. except our friend and counsellor, the ingenious wizard Gandalf, may never return. Never return. It is a solemn moment. Our object is, I take it, well known to uh, all of us. Oh, oh never return. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Mr. Baggins, Mr. Baggins. He fainted. Stop my lightning. Stop my lightning. Stop my lightning. Stop my lightning. Excitable little fellow gets funny fits, but he is one of the best. As fierce as a dragon in a pinch. Ah, but will he do, do you think? Do? What, Gloin? Well... It's all very well for you to say this hobbit is fierce. But one shriek like that in a moment of excitement would be enough to wake the dragon and all his relatives and then kill a lot of us. Yes. Mm. I think, I think it sounded more like fright than excitement. As soon as I clapped eyes on the little fella bobbing and puffing on the mat, I had my doubts. Glorian, uh, let's have no more argument. Argument? All I want you to say is... You all asked me to find a 14th Fjord expedition, and I chose... Mr. Baggins, ah, yes, yes, there yes, is a lot yes, more in him than you guess, and a deal more than he has any idea of himself. Huh? You may, or possibly, all live to thank me, but yet if you just really think... let anyone say that I chose the wrong man or the wrong house, and you can stop at 13 and have all the bad luck you like, or go back to digging coal. No, 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 no more arguments. First of all, I, sh I should like to know a little bit more about things. Things? Yes, things. I, I mean, well, I mean about the gold and the, and, 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 and the dragon and all that and how it got there and who it belongs to and so on. And further. Oh, bless me, didn't you hear our song? Haven't we been talking about all this for hours? For hours. Yes, well, all the same, your, 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 your um, Tory, yes. I, I, should like, I should like it all plain and clear. I mean, I should like to know about risks and out-of-pocket expenses, time required, remuneration, and so forth. Oh, very well. <laughs> <coughs> Long ago, in my grandfather's time, our family was driven out to the far north and came to a mountain called the Lonely Mountain. There they mined and tunneled and made huge halls and workshops, and in addition, I, I believe they found a good deal of gold and a great many jewels, too. They grew immensely rich and famous, and my grandfather was king under the mountain and was treated with great reverence by mortal men of the merry town of Dale. It was undoubtedly the gold and jewels which brought the dragon to the mountain and to Dale. Dragons steal treasures wherever they can find them and guard their plunder as long as they live, which is practically forever. There were lots of dragons in the north in those days, and one was a most especially greedy, strong, and wicked dragon called Smaug. Yes, uh, Smaug. One day he flew up in the air and came south. The first we heard of it was a noise like a hurricane coming from the north, and the pine trees in the mountain creaked and cracking in the wind. We saw the dragon settle on the mountain in a spout of flame. And then he came down the slope, setting the woods all afire. By that time, all the bells were ringing in Dale, and the warriors were arming. The dwarves rushed out of their great gate, but there was the dragon waiting for them. None escaped that way. After that, there were no dwarves left alive inside the mountain, and the dragon kept all their wealth for himself. The only ones to escape were those of us who happened to be outside at the time. 
Since then, we have had to earn our livings as best we could up and down the lands, often sinking as low as blacksmith's work, huh? and even coal mining. And even now, when I will allow we have a good bit laid by and are not so badly off, we still mean to get back our stolen treasure, huh? and to bring back our curses to Smaug, if we can. Yes, yes, well, a little light now. I think I want you all to look at something. Uh, I'll get a lamp. No need. My staff will serve the purpose. Uh, your, your staff? Certainly. 